Happy Monday out there, Team 42. It's your skipper here, Darius Dell, to present our Macro Minute for Monday, December 11th, 2023. Hope everyone had a good weekend. As always, we'll start with our executive summary from today's leadoff morning note. If you like the analysis supporting these conclusions, as well as what to do about them in your portfolio, obviously you need to be a client of 42 Macro. So let's just hop right in. So number one, uh, the December University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey supported consensus expectations of a soft landing uh, in the U.S. economy. Number two, uh, we continue to believe that predicting whether the economy soft, hard, or no lands is a fool's errand. Uh, asset markets reserve the right to price in multiple economic scenarios in succession. It is our job as investors to make and save money along the way, regardless of outcome, hence our choice to position according to our medium-term quantitative risk management signals, rather than exposing ourselves to the confirmation bias that comes from pigeonholing ourselves into one of those three camps. Right now, our medium-term quant signals are unequivocally bullish. We'll communicate and reposition when that changes. And then lastly, number three, in China, uh, the November and C November CPI and PBI data supported expectations of incremental policy easing. We continue to believe Beijing is gearing up the front load policy support for 2024 early in the new year. Refer to our December 5th leadoff morning note for more details regarding that outcome. Transitioning to my uh, 42 macro dashboard, our beautiful 42 macro dashboard this morning. We'll start with our uh, signals from our friends over at Longbow in terms of uh, trading ranges. The VIX is the only thing that overbought, oversold uh, this morning. You're getting close to the lower boundary of that VIX range here. Uh, important that's, ha that's heading into a pretty big week for economics, uh, uh, economic and policy updates. You got CPI from the U.S. on Tuesday, PPI from the U.S. Uh, uh, on Wednesday, uh, retail sales on Thursday here in the U.S., and then industrial production on Friday in the U.S. You got Chinese hard data, retail sales, industrial production, fixed asset investment, and the unemployment rate uh, on Friday as well. And then Wednesday, we have the FOMC at 2 p.m. And then on Thursday, we got the Bank of England and ECB policy meetings as well. So uh, VIX at the low end of the range heading into a, a big week suggests that you're probably not going to see the kind of, you know, Vanna flows that you tend to see on the other side of, you know, the CPI prints or the uh, FOMC prints. You know, the markets are pretty, uh, pretty coalesced around a soft landing consensus right now. So uh, we do need to see uh, both data and policy updates continue to support that consensus. Uh, we expect they will, just given the evolution of the data um, over the last few weeks in terms of inflation and, and the labor market. Uh, and then transitioning to the 42 macro aware community, uh, we're getting a question here uh, uh, regarding our uh, qualitative research uh, summary. Uh, so one of the aspects of our qualitative research summaries, we help investors understand uh, which economies abroad uh, have the best growth and in inflation dynamics uh, and policy dynamics in so much that we also help them understand which economies abroad have the worst, the least favorable uh, growth, inflation uh, and policy dynamics. And, and so Canada uh, is one of the economies that has uh, one of the more favorable growth dynamics at the current juncture uh, and how we're deriving that uh, as we have, you know, it's 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 born out of our, our systematic uh, at long short signals that are in our um, in our in our in our global uh, liquidity monitor table, uh, and so right now what we're looking for on the long side of an equity market from a growth standpoint uh, is an acceleration, a trending acceleration in the leading indicator for growth. Uh, that's the composite PMI uh, for in that particular table, and then we also want to see positive economic surprises on a trending basis. Uh, and right now, Canada is the, actually the only economy that has a trending. Uh, horizon a, a composite PMI on a trend basis and a trend of higher uh, positive economic surprises. Uh, so there's no surprise that Canada has the most favorable growth outlooks or growth dynamics, uh, you know, in so much that, you know, we're on the negative side of growth, we're looking for a lower trend on the composite PMI and a trend of, of uh, economic uh, uh, disappointment. Uh, in, in those particular economies. Uh, so that's uh, that's one of those things. So Canada's growth on an absolute level is not great. Uh, but again, markets don't function on absolutes, you know, the, the growth's good or growth's bad. Markets function on going from good to bad or, or from bad to, to bad to good and in everywhere in between. It's about the direction of travel and it's about, you know, the direction of travel relative to consensus expectations, uh, which is why we're looking at direction of travel and, 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 and economic surprises as those two factors to determine who, which economies have the most favorable and or least favorable growth dynamics in that table. Similar process we use for inflation. On the inflation side, we're looking for uh, the headline and seeing core CPI decelerating with negative uh, inflation surprises on the, on, the, on, the, on the, that's on the most favorable side for inflation. 
on the least favorable side for inflation, uh, we're looking for economies that have accelerating uh, headline and core CPI uh, with uh, pos uh, positive inflation surprises. And then lastly, on the policy front, uh, we're looking for in that uh, for, for economies that have favorable policy, we're looking for a trend higher in their uh, specific country's liquidity proxy. So recall that we've created a, a global liquidity proxy, which is the aggregated sum of the global central bank balance sheet, global broad money supply, and global FX reserves uh, minus gold. We run that same process for every major economy that feeds into that global liquidity proxy. And so on the policy front, we're looking for uh, rising uh, uh, the country level uh, liquidity proxy. And then we're also looking for uh, declining policy rates. So that'd be a very positive uh, policy dynamic in an economy in so much that a falling liquidity proxy and a rising policy rate would be uh, the, the opposite of that, which would be a negative. Uh, so that's the, for those of you who are obviously reviewing our qualitative research summary uh, on a daily and or weekly basis and our lead up morning note and around the horn and our monthly basis and our macro scouting report as well, uh, that, that's how we get to derive those signals. So I just want to make sure everyone's aware of that. That's all in the footer, by the way. So if you uh, if you would have to uh, check out that table, all this information is obviously included in the footer of that slide. So we'll wrap it up there. Uh, Derry Stell presenting our macro minute for Monday, December 11th, 2023. Best of luck out there today. We'll catch you back here tomorrow. Cheers.